Okay, so, all right, so now, um, in the previous video, I, I started the discussion of derivatives, and I was explaining um, basically what a, deri what a derivative is, and um, how to pretty much start with a, the description of the secant line, or the abbreviated chain, and get to the tangent line, or the, the instantaneous rate change. So now, if, if we have this bar here, this is the um, the average rate of change of a function. But if we take a limit as delta x approaches zero, it's an, again it's never going to actually be zero, but it's going to be extremely close to zero, as close to zero as possible. So if the values keep getting smaller, then that gives us the instantaneous rate of change. Because imagine if you're taking, uh, we start at delta x is equal to 10, then 9, then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then less than a second, less than a second, and let's say x is for seconds or whatever. So then it's less than a second, much less than a second, much, much, much less than a second, you know, but not zero seconds, just less than a second, then that's basically an instant, uh, an extremely quick point in time. So that gives us f prime of x. Okay, so that was a basic recap of the last video. So now, so we've got this now. All right, now we can actually use this. This is a, a formula for the derivative of, of the function here, this orange function. Or it could be any function, but this is the formula for the derivative of a function. This is, this is just a general formula. Okay, so now um, we can use this with a function to calculate the derivative, and then we can use that derivative to calculate the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line, such as this purple line there. Okay, so let me erase some of this. Um, so I'm going to do an example, and let's say I do f of x is equal to x plus 3 squared. All right, so extremely simple function. Now I want to try to find the slope of the tangent line. Well, the slope of this function, I should say, um, when x is equal to two. All right. So for simplicity, I'm going to change these c's into x's. But it doesn't matter. You see x, h, whatever. But, you know, just so that everything will match, I'll use x's. Okay, so now, we're going to use this. Now, what is this telling you? Alright, this is telling me that I'm going to, for the first part, I'm going to plug in uh, x plus delta x for every x in this function here. So, we're going to plug that in. So, let's say, so this part limit as delta x approaches zero of oh wait I'm not writing f anymore so it's just going to be this so it's going to be alright x plus delta x because I'm plugging that in for this x plus 3 squared alright minus f of x f of x is equal to this so minus x plus 3 squared, and all divided by delta x, or the change in x. Now that could be, depending on the problem, if it's a physics problem perhaps, or, or engineering, it could be delta t for time, you know. Um, so these are just, x and y are just generic for math, and um, you'll use different variables depending on the discipline. Okay, so now we have to do this part. So I'm just going to erase this here so I have more space. Actually, I should probably even erase this. Alright, so now I've got a good amount of space here. Okay, so now I have to expand these and simplify and everything and then take the limit. So now, 
this will give me, alright, so when I expand this, I'm going to have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of x squared uh, plus x delta x plus 3x plus uh, x delta x plus 3 delta x plus 3x plus 3 delta x plus 9. So that's this part expanded. Now we're going to do minus. And make sure you always remember that when you're doing this part, um, you have to put this in parentheses when, whenever you expand something like this because the negative has to be distributed to each term. Okay, so now x squared plus, well we're going to get 3x plus 3x, so that's 6x plus 9. So, and always remember that this is all divided by delta x. Because sometimes, you know, you do a whole bunch of simplification uh, in, the, in the numerator of this fraction here, and then you forget about the delta x, which is extremely important. If you don't uh, put this delta x down there and then simplify with this delta x, you're going to get the wrong answer every time. Okay, so now we can, um, well, I can erase that part. And I could just distribute this negative out right now so that uh, we can start to simplify. So it's going to be minus x squared minus 6x and then minus 9. Well, we don't need this anymore, this ending parentheses. Okay, so now we're going to take care of the like terms. So we've got an x minus x squared here plus x squared here, and we've got x uh, delta x, x delta x, so that's 2x delta x. So let me just write this here. So we took care of those, so 3x and 3x, so that's 6x. Okay, now 3 delta x plus 3 delta x, that's 6 delta x. And then these 9's cancel out here. And then, um, wait, there was a delta x squared somewhere here. Or at least there should have been. Let me see if I can remember where that delta x squared is supposed to be. Well, okay, so it's supposed to be plus delta x here. Delta x squared. We're supposed to have a uh, plus delta x, so at the end. If you, uh, if you go back in the video and, and you expand what I did before, you see that that's supposed to be a plus delta x there. Okay, so now there's nothing to cancel out that plus delta x. So now we have all of this. Oh, um, no, yeah, we're good. Okay. Oh, I see where I went wrong. Okay. This is 6x, uh, and then this is minus 6x. So this 6x isn't there. So this is 2x delta x. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> see, uh, it, it takes a whole bunch to simplify this and guess certain things but 
And remember, all divided by delta x. And then the limit, of course. That looks like a 6, I don't know. <laughs> it's a 0. Alright. So now we have this part. All right. So, um, so that cancels out. That negative 6 or minus 6x cancels out with this 3x plus 3x, 6x minus 6x. Okay. Alright, so now what we can do here is we can factor out uh, delta x from the top and from the bottom. Or we can just cancel uh, one delta x here, one delta x here, and then one delta x there, and then there's going to be delta x. Um, either way, because this could be 2x delta x divided by delta x plus 6x delta x divided by delta x, and then delta x squared divided by delta x. You can think of it as uh, three separate fractions, and then cancel it that way. But I find it better to do this. So this is going to be equal to the limit, of course, but then 2x plus 6 plus delta x. This is 1 because we factor out delta x from the top and from the bottom. So we factor out this delta x here and we factor out 1 delta x here. So if you uh, multiply this out again, you're going to get this far. Alright, so this of course is 1. So we can forget about that part. Now, so this is 1 also, uh, so this is just this numerator here. Now we can evaluate the limit because we don't have a delta x in the denominator. So now we can plug in 0 for the delta x's. So we just have 1 0 here. Uh, 1 delta x I should say. So now this tells us that, remember um, this whole thing was equal to f prime of x, so this tells us that f prime of x is equal to 2x plus 6, because that was 0, divided by 1, so it's 2x plus 6. Now we wanted that x is equal to 2, alright? So now we just plug in f prime of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 plus 6, okay, is equal to 10. So, if we, uh, if we graphed this function here, and we looked at the uh, point x is equal to 2, then at that point the graph would be changing, the, the slope of the graph would be 10. So it would be going up 10 for every one it goes over. Alright, so that's basically it, and uh, I hope you all learned something, and again sorry about uh, the whole simplification mistake that I made there with the uh, delta x and then forgetting to cancel this uh, minus 6 here. Alright, well, um, now there are of course easier ways to calculate this, you don't need to use this. Oh, I, I forgot to say, this is actually called the difference quotient. That formula I worked out for getting the derivative is a difference quotient and um, you don't have to use that you'll learn better techniques, faster techniques to do this and you'll get the exact same answer for this and then you can plug in the x value and get this answer here. Alright, so well I hope you learned something, that's the basic idea of derivatives. See you in the next video.